Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about repairing the heat exchanger from Pete Salverson and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. As you guys know from the video where we towed the Halverson up from Sydney, it's running on just one engine at the moment, and the problem with that engine that's not working is the heat exchanger. So let's head back out to Whitecrest and take it out. Oh, hang on, there's a nice boat. I like that. We're going to take the heat exchanger off uh, Pete's Vetus now. And oh, by the way, this is Bronick, who I didn't <laughs> I didn't introduce properly last time. Bronick uh, had Sole, the sailing boat that was with us when we went to Sydney Harbour. So that was my bad. And we're going to uh, Port Stephens in November. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Port Stephens, bro, bro, what's Broughton, Broughton Island. Broughton yeah. Island. Nice. All right. Uh, we're thinking if we take this off, we can squeeze in. I say we, but it's really just Pete, uh, and uh, get to the bolts. You can see here, there are bolts here. Unfortunately, this is the one we're going to do, which is slightly worse access. What engine's in Solo, bro? I've uh, got a Yanmar. Yanmar, nice. Yeah. Is that what you mean? It's a yeah. Ford JH series. What, what year? I think it's in about a 1992. Ooh. But still as good as new. It's only got 3,000 3, uh, hours on it. Is that young for a Yanmar? Sounds like uh, a lot. <laughs> no, it's not really. Okay. Well, you think about what trucks do, like hours-wise. Yeah, yeah. Diesels, yeah. Well, like maybe six hundred, so they've got, yeah. they've got no right to be retiring. Yeah. So, but like a, you know, an outboard with uh, three thousand hours, you might worry, but a diesel, no. Okay. Basically, half the job right there, right? Well, that's my bit done. <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting. What are you seeing? Oh, just this bit of steel running the length. What's that about? I don't know what that is. Oh, but it rolls. Looks like it might go to a rudder. Oh, is it the cable? But yeah, you're turning the you're turning the wheel. Am I? Yeah. Wow, that's your steering. Interesting. Old school. I like it. 1951. Steel thing. Turn the wheel. Wow. Is it? Yeah. Funky. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I'm suitably impressed by old school technology. I don't know why our fix didn't work. It looks awesome. Yeah. Looks like something out of Ghostbusters. <laughs> hmm. Any luck? Yeah, that was easy. Hey! That's what I like to hear! Apart from the fact that the uh, paint has turned your 14 mil, mil bolts into 14.63 mil bolts. <laughs> yes. But other than that. Oh, this is music. I'm excited, Stu! Oh, God, they're coming out very easily. There we go. It's all that, you, you loosened them last time with your brute strength and good looks. Did I? Oh, I, just, <laughs> I, I looked at them with blue steel. <laughs> yeah, that's it, and they thought... Yeah, better come undone. Better. So it's interesting, this wire from the alternator actually touches up against it. Well, could that be a possible source of... I don't know, but it's... or...? Yeah... Ah... Oh. This would be a lot easier if I had deck muscles. <laughs> there you go, there's my what. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, so I need a big flathead now. That you have. Rather, this is about as big as we can get. Right. Uh, is this seacock closed? Um, they're all open. So I think we should close the seacock for this one and you're probably going to end up with some coolant. In the village. Yeah. Oh, okay, so. Seacock closed. Right, so let's get these off. They look about 10 mil. And this and that. 
Now, from memory, these were Allen keys, weren't they? <laughs> Somewhere on there, under the... Uh... You might not need it. No, no, I'm true. It. And then I don't even know what's under there. Let's gouge that off. It's interesting, it's mostly corroded aluminium, isn't it? It is now. Look at that. Yeah. There's the Ghostbusters, he slimed me. So, I don't even remember what held this on. Fasteners, I don't know what was there, or do we just take just that, that off? Just that, yeah. Yeah, let's take that off. But I think we should take these. They should be Allen key, yeah. Well, oh, then we can get that off afterwards, actually. Should we just take the two hoses and take this with us as well? Yes, that's fine, yeah, it's good. All right, and that was a heat sensor, temperature sensor. Yeah. All right, 10 mil, 10 mil, 10 mil, let's take it all off. So I'm curious to know where these go then. I'm particularly curious to know so we don't end up dropping them into the bilge and the boat sinks overnight. Luckily we've got batteries in the bilge pump. I'm, I'm, what can go wrong? Well, that's it. I'm. So let's see if that just empties the pipe. Yeah, it's already stopped, doesn't it? Yeah, this pipe under here is the coolant pipe. I can it's, see it here, yeah. It's, um, so this will be where all the all the green stuff, green, <laughs> the coolant comes out. Unfortunately, do you want a something? Uh, well, the hose is actually quite. Ah, uh, yeah, quite a bit will come out of the heat exchanger itself. You got a pan or? Yeah, we do. Five liters, baby. Oh, love your work. Nice. <laughs> Can you lift that up by its ring a bit? Yeah. 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 Oh, the better. We'll see if we can. Yeah. I think it's actually going in the pan. Hey. <laughs> it's nice. Genius. Um, is this touch ready now? Uh, n not, uh, it is to a, a to a hose, but the hose, the clamp's undone, so it's a case of just wriggling the hose off now. That's the clamp out there. Okay, cool. That's a good start. It's got the, this clamp has the, the heat, the hot water. Can you, can you, I wonder if, uh, because I can kind of. You want that up and over, or? Got it. All done. He man. <laughs> I just, it just, I had the purchase going down, so. Right. Stop it. Uh, okay. What do we got? Oh, I just need a uh, wire cutters. Yeah, I think they're right by you. They are. There you go. That is a Vitas heat exchanger. It is. All right. Let's get it on. Where should we get it? Do you want to put it on my boat? <laughs> Give it's it. just. Oh, that's right. This that's goes the end of in. The cap there. That yeah, it end. goes right in. So yeah. all the housing is just gone. Yeah. Now I can't remember, ah, that's right, it's a single bolt through the centre. Oh yeah. Let's take it on to Renko, I'll wire brush it too. Yeah. It's quite, there was a bit of gunk came out there, so. Yeah. But that's, oh. How are we that. looking? Wow. It's awesome. <laughs> There's just no metal to seal Some against. Some of them might have a bit of sicker flex. <laughs> I mean, this used to have a, a lip that this went into. This is supposed to go into a lip about 10 mil. Yeah. And seal with a single bolt in the center. It kind of feels like, it'd be interesting to see where the leak, can we, what can you do to rig up water to go through it in a workshop? Ah, uh, you just put air pressure in. And then see if it blows out. And then you have a, a gauge saying, oh, it's holding 10 Excellent. PSI of air pressure. If it doesn't drop, then it won't leak water. Okay, and yeah. conversely, if it does hold, say 10 PSI. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> Why is it I feel like it's just, just a massive win to get it off? Oh, <laughs> well, you know what I mean? it just feels like well, we can now see it's going to be resolved now. one way or the other. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's right. yeah. And it's quite easy to get that. It's not as hard to clean as I thought. No. no, no, no. Is that, does it, does the centre thing get used or is that just? That's um, it's just where the cap well, attaches. It's, it's where the cap attached. But the nice thing about it is it could probably also be a puller to get the core out. Not that I think that core is coming out, but if you put a puller on there. And I then, see, yeah. Um, the core looks pretty. Stuck. Well, yeah. But don't get me wrong, now it's out, you could put your um, circulate. We could drop this in citric acid or, or, exactly. or whatever we want, right? Well, you could just pass it through the core using this. Okay. Because it's in one side, out the other. 
this is the thing we're seeing. So it goes in one side through the core. So half the core is one way, half the core is the other way. This is how much is missing here. Ooh. Like, remember that? I mean, that's like, we can't, we've got to fix that properly. Yeah, I didn't realize that at all. Yeah, yeah, so that's, that's probably... how much gone. I mean, look how much the casing's just missing. Possibly. Oh, but they, they're both terrible. Like, yeah. once it's off, now's the time to to either fix it or replace it. Yeah. And the question is, do you replace it with original or do you replace it with aftermarket or fabricated? Is So raw water, raw water, coolant, coolant, exhaust manifold. These are all exhaust? Yeah, they're your exhaust ports. Ah, okay. And that's when your exhaust comes out here. So there's no... And then water gets injected here to cool your exhaust. Okay. okay. That's the far end of the heat exchanger. Oh, look at that, look at those beautiful crystals. Yeah, so I think that's copper crystals, copper sulfate, and that's coolant. With the power of Coopers, we are victorious, Pete. All right, back in the workshop now. Here is the heat exchanger. I'm thinking I'm gonna make up a very, very weak acid bath and soak this and see if that helps us get the core out. I'm not gonna soak it very long, 10 minutes, very weak, just to see if we can clean it up a little bit before knocking the core out. Okay, it's just a tub of water at the moment. I'll add some acid. Do I measure it precisely? Nah. Bless you, no. Pop this in the uh, core side down, giving the trays a little bit shallow. That acid, I think, was 32%, probably half a litre into 10 litres, so, you know, pretty weak mix. Okay, let's let that soak for 10, 15 minutes. It's not fizzing away wildly or anything like that, which is good. All right, while we're waiting for that to do its thing, I might clean some of this up on the wire wheel. Probably could have gone longer and stronger. That's the soak that is. Uh, but we'll give it a go now anyway. I'll have a good a few taps, see if it moves at all or not. Not keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, I am gonna take this little, uh, could be a drain plug, could be an anode, could be both. Uh, it's definitely at the bottom. Take that out first because it can sit flush on this side and there's sort of a 10 mil gap here for the core to knock down. So we can just stand it on its end then. It's a good start. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe just drain plug, not anode. Huh? There we go. Be nice to uh, press it out, but we'll give it a few taps. All right, let's find some sort of wooden you know, dowel we can use to hit on it with. It's not moving. Given it's not moving, I think we can probably say the seal between the coolant side and the raw water side is still okay. We can test that, pressure test it. So, the other option is simply get it together, clean all this, it's had the acid wash, clean it up, do a sort of a, you know, a DevCon metallized epoxy repair, see how long it lasts, you know. Pete's kind of looking for a practically zero dollar way out of this at the moment, which I understand. 
all we need to do actually really beyond that is make sure the uh, core itself is as clear as we can get it so that it actually does its job. The other thing I don't mind about just sealing it all up permanently is that uh, then it's still watertight to run coolant through it to function as just an exhaust header down the track. Then all you have to do is in line with the uh, fresh water here and here is run a second heat exchanger. And as long as the coolant goes through that heat exchanger, through the exhaust manifold, this thing won't melt. And this really is the custom part we need to keep. So doing this sort of dodgy fix will get us through the summer as a working engine and serve the boat down the track when you've got an external heat exchanger. Not really seeing a downside to giving it a go, to be honest with you. What is this now, Dave? <laughs> Pay attention. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we've got this cleaned up. We're going to try and epoxy it now. We're calling this not not A grade. <laughs> Big, what's up? A water dragon or a bluey? Caught up in the net. Oh, caught up in the net. Oh. I was wondering what you were saying. Oh, there he is. Come on, buddy. You got yourself caught. No, 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 no. come on. Putting your nose into it. There you go. <laughs> You're free. <laughs> and I'm off. Oh. He's going to the water. Yeah, he's just hiding. Stressing you out. Sorry, mate. Don't eat the eggs. <laughs> he went straight to the pond. All right, where were we? <laughs> we were winning. We were in MacGyver workshop. We were. So we decided that instead of uh, TIG welding up, putting it through a machine shop, milling it to within a fraction of a millimetre, we're just going to bog it up with epoxy. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling Pete I used the Devcon aluminium epoxy on a mate's outboard to build up the housing for the water pump, and that was seven years ago. So we're feeling we've got half a chance. But cleaning is gonna be critical. Clean and dry. We're gonna use the acetone to dry it and get rid of greases and draw the water out, but we're gonna use a wire wheel on a die grinder to really clean it up because the epoxy is very strong, but if it doesn't adhere, there's no point. Might just blow some compressed air through the holes. Yeah, see what comes out. See if, it, if anything, yeah, just test each one. Where are my gogs? Here we go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that came out. All right, let's, let's move the camera. So we can actually sort of feel if it's yeah, clear, not clear. Can you reach for the hanger? Well, so the guy at the marina said putting a coat hanger through it's the worst thing you can ever do because you scratch it and it's the beginning of the end. But this is actually overdue to be... Yeah, yeah, this is dead, dead, dead. Well, and the other thing is, even just soaking it, and that was a pretty easy push through, even soaking it wasn't working because it's gummed up and yeah. the solution's not... Oh, that actually hurt. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> you got like... a big chunk. Yeah, 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 actually, yeah, but, yeah, cop that. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's true, but it's really... It feels like it's sticky and it's like clay. Aluminium yeah. clay. So to me, the, the service process generally is to pop those cones out and clean them separate to the housing. Yes. That's not happening. No, you take that out and yeah. you just soak just that. Yeah. So unfortunately we're smoke soaking the housing as well. So aluminium doesn't love acid, but it's pretty weak acid. They're all clear, so. That is a very good start. Should we just give it another quick acid soak, 10 minutes? Yeah. Release then, some then, uh, yeah. Let's do it. That's the... Um, Can you feel it on your fingers? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, wow, well, okay. Not much. No, I wore gloves before, but it's actually pretty mild. I'll tilt it up. I can get all the air out of the tubes, like just get a bit of angle. If it sits perfectly level, the air stays in the tubes. All right. Let that do its thing. Let's just give it 10 minutes, about maybe one Cooper's. <laughs> it's a unit of time we measure things in here. So you can see the copper now, Pete. Have a look. Oh, yeah, look at it. The yeah. coming through. Yeah. 
Wow. That's long enough. And you can see a bit of gassing, so that's a, that's long enough. Put it in the water. Oh, spider. Why is there a spider at everything in Australia? We've <laughs> oh, already had a lizard attack. So we'll soak both ends just to get the acid off. Give it another blow through so it doesn't keep eating away. And then we'll wire brush it, dry it, acetone it, epoxy it. Okay, cleaned up pretty well with the wire wheel. All the kind of powdery aluminium oxide's gone now. Gonna soak each end in some acetone, get any grease, draw any water out, and then let it dry and do the epoxying. The next day, Pete and I decided to do the gluing inside the lounge room so we could sit in front of the telly because uh, like everyone, we were very interested to see the result of the uh, Chelsea Wren Champions League game. We'll do the tough one first. Yeah. yeah. It's just one. So it just has the properties of aluminium. Yeah. Uh, I think it might actually have aluminium in it. I think it's like oh, aluminium impregnated or something. Now, how do you do your ratios? Is this by weight or by... It says eight to one, but you can do it by weight or by volume. Okay. Have you got a little scale? I do, yeah. <laughs> That's probably easy. It's more accurate. So, so you got 90 grams. Are you going to put 90 of the... Eight in right now. Yeah, 90 for the resin. Yeah. All right. Taping up the heat exchanger core. Just cut this round with a knife now. Yeah. All right. I think we're getting close. So okay. I reckon 90 grams of magic there. Yep. 10 grams of goo to go. Just going to use a uh, silicon spray as the releasing agent on the ends that we're going to remove afterwards. So that's the orientation it was in originally, so that's the orientation we'll cast it in, just in case the irregularities mean we can't get it in afterwards. Um, you know, I should probably bolt it down now I think about it. Cut the centre and actually bolt it in place. Yeah, I don't know, I'm just sort of trying to look at that and thinking we've got enough. Is it oh, yeah, yeah. And look, we can always add some more, you know, yeah. <laughs> particularly when it's not quite set, you'll get a good chemical bond for many hours after you do the first round. Is that right? So what, to put epoxy onto, put the DEVCON onto top of DEVCON? Yes. Once it's, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. When there's a big gloop. Well, although having said that, as long as we've got silicon enough to remove it, we can then put it back on the wire wheel and yeah, sand it. get any, yeah, get any sort of over gloop off. I did coat the entire flange. I'm particularly pleased that, that you've matched the colour. Uh, exactly, yes. <laughs> well, I think that's actually a part of well, it though, being the epoxy. Well, can we get some yellow aluminium? Well, I do think we should paint it, though. I think we should try and order a can of spray paint, because I think once we do this, to paint over the top... What, before we sell it? <laughs> exactly. Before we put it on eBay, it's brand new. <laughs> yes. Um, we'll actually only hold it together and protect it more. No, I get, I get what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, for the sake of one can of spray paint... It's got to be Vetus Yellow, must be a thing. Must be Vetus it's Yellow as a thing. For sure. Interesting to see how much, yeah. Yeah, but I certainly don't want it to be low because we can sand it. I'd rather be high. Yeah, than totally. Low. Yeah. The silicon did its job. The bronze fitting popped out nice and easily. You can see the epoxy comes in under here because. Where are we? There is this chamfered lip on it. Might have been interesting to have put something in this diameter that didn't have that, so that space was left for like an O-ring or something, but I think we're okay. This epoxy's piled up because we need to do a flat flange that is higher than this base. Okay, I'm going to hit it with a reasonably aggressive flap disc to start with, and then we'll use something much flatter to give ourselves this flange surface to seal against with the exhaust. Now 
now you've decided the workshop's where you want to be, is it? You're going to be workshop bird. Fair enough. Why not? All right. Just measuring up the new epoxy using the scales. One to nine by weight. This is the big missing section we're going to be building up on this side. So I think if we just get something in there, we can pry it out. Yeah. All right. There we go. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Silicon does the trick again. We were a little bit low in a couple of places, so we just mixed up a new batch and added a bit of a skim coat. Because the other batch wasn't too old, it should chemically bond nicely. While that was setting, we headed back out to Whitecrest just to look at what parts we needed to order. Maybe. Hard to say. So, let me make a note of models. <laughs> I'll get a photo of that. M4178 22A. Oh, look at this, 3000 kilowatt. That's amazing. All right, the epoxy that Pete and I put on yesterday is now drying. So I'm gonna use this little finishing sander to knock the top bits down. Then I'm gonna use this uh, thick bit of aluminium as a plate just to try and get this flange mating surface as flat as we can. Then, bit of paint, and uh, it's uh, ready to get installed. Before we install it, we'll uh, pressure test it too, just so we seem slightly less dodgy than we actually are. While I'm here, it's worth mentioning, I've been working with Mike from the YouTube channel, She'll Be Right Garage, to fix up Sleazy, the Ford LTD that um, longtime subscribers will have seen in the background of other videos in the workshop and recently. We've done an engine swap on that. We've been working together to do it. He's been filming the whole thing. So I'm heading out uh, this afternoon to finish that job with him, hopefully. And when it's all up online, I'll flick you a link to it. But what he does with these, just, you know, these sort of exhaust manifold mating surfaces is actually gets like, uh, you know, light oil, WD-40 type thing, and actually gets a knife sharpening stone and cleans them up. kind of fussing over this a little bit because I'm not a big fan of killing your friends with carbon monoxide poisoning. Although it is good that he has sensors installed in the boat too, which is awesome. Just cleaning the inside up where the gasket goes now. Ah, okay, let's tidy up this other end with the finishing sander. Give it a white with acetone. I'm not going to take all the paint off, you know. No, sorry. Purists will hate me for it. But not going to happen. Blow all the dust out. Spray paint it. Paint it black and put it back. Yellow in this case. Well, thanks for watching. I'm about to rush off for a bit of a holiday, five days off with Vic, uh, long overdue, so I'm really looking forward to that. About to leave in about an hour. Uh, so I'll give you a quick look at where we got to. I think this is gonna work. Obviously the idea here was to do a pretty much, you know, a zero dollar fix, under a hundred dollars to fix it, given these things cost, I think about five grand each. So I'll show you where we got to, and then when I get back, we'll install it and see how it actually goes. Got some yellow paint on it. This was uh, White King Rust Guard Epoxy Enamel. It was golden yellow, which was pretty close to the Vetus yellow. Then uh, took the tape off the heat exchanger core. Still wet, so I can't really, uh, you know, get right in there and clean it up yet. But we will sand the paint off some of the mating surfaces, you know, a few things like that. But other than that, I think it's pretty much ready to go. So we will see. Definitely a lot better than it was. Hopefully by the time we get back from the holiday, the gaskets, no rings and thermostats will be here and we can get straight into putting it back in the boat and testing it. So until then, take care and I'll catch you soon. See ya. you could want. Just use your words. Even though you've got water in your hutch. You prefer
fur water from the garden, don't you? You're hot because you've gone broody. You are thirsty. I even cleaned your water thing this morning. Is that what's wrong with it? It's too clean. Daisy, what's up? You're still hungry. Go Daisy, attack. <laughs> nice work, Daffy. It's your seed, not the lorikeets. Having a good little preen. We're going on holidays, Daffy. You're gonna have Sinead looking after you while we're gone. Coming to feed you.